Hello. So today we're going to do the second part of our hashtag mood project. Now, um, the first part of this will be to draw a self-portrait and I've made a video on this before. Uh, if you haven't done that, um, I'm going to go very quickly over it now. But if you haven't done a self-portrait before, please watch the video because it will help you. It'll take you through very step by step and it'll talk about the proportions of the face and how your face fits together. The one thing about a, a self-portrait or the one thing that you need to know about when you're doing a self-portrait is all the parts of our face all have the same proportions and that makes it really easy because it means you like a guide you can follow and then the rest of your drawing can go in around it. Um, then after we've done our portrait bit we're going to go on and we're going to use colour and we use colour to reflect our moods as well. So equipment that you'll need. For the self-portrait I have got a rubber, I've got a pencil um, and I'm going to obviously I've got some paper as well. Um, I'm obviously going to watch my guide and get my proportions right on my face and I'm going to do it in pencil first. When I finish that I will also need a sharpie or um, a felt tip of some sort. Um, for the colouring part I've got um, these lovely uh, fine line pens that you know from school. I've also got some uh, fatter ones, the broad ones which are great because uh, we're going to be using colour in this really really um, well, to, to, for effect really. Um, if you don't have these, then just use what you've got. If you've if you've only got two colours, if you've got, say, I don't know, we can do it in black and white if you want to do monochrome, that's called. But you can use these. Um, I've also got some uh, watercolours, although I haven't got much of them left, so I might use some of those. I've got some really nice bright watercolours. But, you know, if you've got them, use them. If you haven't got them, don't worry. You could use coloured pencils as well. The only reason why I'm using the felt tips is because I use the felt tips in the first part. So... Um, first thing I'm going to do, start off with my self-portrait. Hello! So, one thing that I have got here, which I didn't talk about earlier, is a mirror. So obviously I need to look at myself. If I don't have a mirror, or if I can't get one um, that's suitable, I can always use uh, my mobile phone and take a selfie and then use that. It's probably a bit easier. Um, I also am going to review, remove all my face furniture. Uh, and the first thing I'm going to do is look at my face. It's symmetrical, so I need to look at the shape of my head. Um, I'm trying to squash my beard down here. So my head is going to sit halfway in the middle of my, of my piece of paper. I'm do, going to do this in about five minutes because I want to move on to the next one. I would expect it to take probably about 45 minutes or an hour if you're doing this really, really, really carefully. So first things first is the shape of my head, which goes on like so. Uh, to help me with that, I'm going to put a line down the middle because obviously my face is symmetrical. Uh, my eyes come halfway between the, my chin and the top of my head. So they're actually halfway up. So eyes go halfway. Um, after you've done your eyes, the next thing is your nose, which is halfway between your eyes and your chin. And again, if you watch my other video, you'll see that this is a lot. There's a, there's a, a much more in-depth and a, a slightly slower paced version of this. So look at that if you're not sure. Next one is the mouth. The mouth is one third of the way down, which means there's one of this bit to two of your chin. So that goes there. And at the moment, if you look, I'm only putting lines and I'm not going crazy with my lines. And I'm also pressing lightly because I obviously will need to rub them out. Next bit is your eyes. Your eyes are very distinctive, but at the moment we're just putting down the shapes. But the actual measurement of your eye, this part, is the same as the bridge of your nose. So whatever that is, will be the same as your eyeball. You can try it with your hand, you can actually measure it out with your hand. So the bridge of your nose is next and your eye is the same amount as that and that also goes on that, that halfway point. So far so good. Um, it looks strange because you've got a massive massive forehead. Now the forehead will be covered in hair so it's fine. Uh, next bit is the ears. Your ears actually go from a line from the top of your, your eye and to the into your mouth so your ears will fit on sort of like that and like that uh, and the last bit is the middle of your eyes so your iris if you go down that's where the corners of your mouth are so if i go down to there that's where my mouth will sit so i've got the general proportions there what i need to start doing now is look carefully at my own face much more carefully than this in the mirror or on my phone and then slowly start 
to add the detail. The last bit you put on is the hair and your hair, depending on where your hair is, will uh, sort of come halfway down your forehead because obviously it's growing on your scalp and it will come down over your head. So by the time you've finished your hair should look a little bit like that. Uh, obviously this would need some fine tweaking so it doesn't quite look like me yet but then I am doing this very very quickly. The last bit is your neck. Now what a lot of children do is they do a teeny tiny neck so your neck actually only is a little bit in from your chin so if that's your jaw there your neck would be about here and your shoulders as well. Your shoulders don't go like this no one is that small your shoulders actually come out along so you can see if you do that it starts to look more like a person than anything else if you get that done first then you can go on with your uh, pencil and you can start doing the details on it and trying to make it look more realistic um, but you need to do this part first and like i say look in my other video um, if you want some extra tips on how to do that properly um, once you've done that and you've got your details, you can then go over it in your Sharpie and start to make it more defined. And I'm going to do that now. finished my portrait and I did this very very quickly it, so I'm quite happy with it it'll do for now um, and like I say that's the starting point so now I've done my drawing I've got my drawing ready I now need to go over it with my uh, my marker pen and I'm going to use that sharpie for that the marker pen I'm not going to go and do any shading and stuff like that. I'm just going to keep it to the main lines uh, I'm not going to worry too much about um, like for example details of my beard and stuff like that you're lucky you don't have a beard to draw, beards are tricky. So I'm gonna do that now. So my portrait is finished. Uh, one thing I want you to remember when you're doing portraits is the first one you do, you probably won't be happy with it. It doesn't have to be perfect. Yeah, just as so long as you know it's you, that's all that's important to me at the moment. You could go on and practice and become wonderful at this and it could take you years to get there. So don't sit there and think it has to be perfect. Um, you know, there are things about this which I would change as well if I had more time. I don't. Um, I've rubbed all my lines out uh, and because I pressed so gently earlier on, it was really easy to adjust. Uh, I'm just going to check around, see if there's anything I need to add. I need to add a few eyelashes, eyelashy parts. There we go, that will do. Um, so, now, the next part is to start splitting this up. Now, I could, what I need to do is create either a pattern or a grid on the background, because then I'm gonna add color to that. So, I could use something circular to draw around, which I think I will, or I could use a straight edge to draw across as well. I don't actually have a ruler, I've got this old bit of shelving, which is great. Uh, I'm gonna use my pencil for this, and I will start off by drawing some straight lines across. Now, when you're drawing straight lines, the, this is, a, is quite handy because it's got a little, uh, almost like a little lever on it. But if you've got a ruler, top tip, drawing a straight line, you put your ruler, you, so you can see where the edge is, you put your hand next to it like this, and you make a triangle. That triangle is important because if I push at this end, this thumb, because it's pushing down, will stop it from going anywhere. If I push at this end, my finger will stop it from moving in the other direction. It makes a really good stable shape. Triangles are the most stable shapes um, because they don't fall over if you push them, if they're made of bits. So uh, the other thing as well is, is I'm holding my pencil really high up and I'm gonna pull it like this. I'm gonna pull it towards me. And I'm gonna do a, like a fan design on this. 
And because we'll see where I'm going. It's out of the way actually, it's just for the felt tips. I want to see where I'm going. I want to make sure all my gaps are great. So there we go. Next, 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 next. So I've separated it one way, like that in a fan. I'm going to separate it another way. So I think because I've done it from here, I might do it from over here. So starting from here again as my triangle. Except I need to be able to see what I'm doing. So. I'm, gonna look, I'm looking from this side and because I'm right-handed, this is the way it needs to be. Don't be afraid to move your page around as well when you're doing this. It's really important that you move your page. You don't get it stuck in one direction because your hand won't be able to go around and draw efficiently. Cool, so now I've got those on there. I think just to make it a bit more interesting as well, I'm gonna put some circles on. And again, circles, and this is a bit thick really, um, but you pull, always pull your pencil, never push it. You could use a compass if you wanted to. The point is I'm breaking up my background. Right, now what I'm doing is I'm having a look around and see if there's any bits that have got really big spaces in them. And I think I've done a pretty good job of those. Um, I think just for good measure, I'm gonna put one diagonal line across like that as well. Maybe one there. And one there, just in case. Right, so. Looks, looks like I've ruined my picture, but I haven't. What I've done is I've broken it up into different pieces. And those different pieces are really important because now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start using my color and I'm gonna start coloring them in. Now, each of these is gonna be a different color, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use, use the colors I know and I'm going to uh, use those colors to show my mood. So the colors of the rainbow go red, Orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet. I know that those two look similar and these two look similar, but they're not. So Richard of York game battle in and vein would be um, violet, which are, don't have a violet, so it should be a color halfway between purple and red. Pink isn't quite right, but there we go. Obviously these are the colors of the spectrum. Uh, you've got red and, and uh, green, which are opposite. You've got orange, and blue, which are opposite. You've got yellow and purple, which are opposite. And these are the primary and secondary colors that you should all know about. Um, yeah, if you put these two next to each other, they will really bounce off each other. Opposite color or complementary colors will really bounce off each other. Um, and that's what they're using a lot of posters and things like that. I'm gonna use this now to my advantage. I've got, I've got two greens, I've also got two blues. Um, and I've got a pink which I can put with a red. So. I'm gonna use these to my advantage. I'm gonna use all the cool colors, cool colors for the outside. And I'm gonna use all the warm colors for the inside. So my face, my shoulders, and my portrait will be in these colors. And everything on the outside will be in these colors. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill in these. I'm gonna fill in some of my hashtags. So I had stay put. I had uh, Proud, well, that, was a um, that was a friend of mine's. I've got all sorts of ones that I've got, which I've put and I've, I've got my list. So I shall be looking at those and I shall start writing these in. But I'm, the idea is that I fill in every single gap all the way around so that this is just like a wall of colour. Um, and the big contrast will be the inside of me, which will be the warm colours, because I know I'm all right and the lockdown is gonna come to an end soon. And all the cool colours on the outside. Uh, and that's my big push. So I'm gonna do that, have a little bit, and uh, I will give you some techniques as well on how to color in shortly.
Okay, I need to tell you a little bit about uh, colouring in. One thing, if I'm colouring in with felt tips, um, I always have a, a piece of scrap paper which I put around the edges, otherwise I end up with pen on my on my table. I don't want to do that. Um, one of the easiest way to do it, and I think the best colour will probably be this blue. If you are going to colour in an area, for example, I'm going to colour in that shape there. The best way to do it is to first go around the edges really carefully. Take your time, do not rush, because if you rush, it just becomes a mess and then it is, looks horrible. Um, I want to colour all of that in blue. So just to make sure, I'm going to go around the edge again, a little bit further in, which gives me a, like a bumper, it gives me a barrier. Now, to make this look really slick, I'm just going to do straight lines and I'm going to overlap them slightly each time, as if I was mowing a lawn. Um, and I'll just do that. And that way, I can see if I've left any gaps. And I can see how lovely and neat that looks. The other thing you can see is that that's wet. You can see it's wet because it's shining. If you are colouring with felt tips, you'll get felt tip ink all over here. And then if you move your hand around, your hand will transfer that ink all over your page. So if you're going to start anywhere, if you're right handed, start up in this corner, make your way over. Or do something and then do something completely in a different area. But don't make sure you haven't got anything coloured underneath your arm because otherwise it will be ruined. Uh, the last thing to say about this is, that I'm going to say for now anyway, is you need to think about the way you use your colours as well. If you've got a really dark colour, like uh, purple for example, and you put purple down first, there's my lovely purple, that's a nice dark colour, and then I go and want to put light blue next to it. If I do this, then it goes in, and can you see how it's, you get purple smear? You don't want that, but that's not what you want. So try and start with the lightest colours first, wait for it to dry, and then put your purple over the top and it'll be a lot sharper and you won't get this blending which you don't particularly want. Um, yeah, I'm leaving a few gaps in here. You can think that I put a little bit of pink in there. I think I will use pink as like a highlight colour. I might use a little bit of yellow, but obviously these are going to be for the inside of my face. So I'm gonna keep going and uh, yeah, let's see what happens. So I'm getting now to a point where I've done quite a lot here. Uh, I've left this one free because I'm going to put hashtag mood in there because that's the name of the project and that's what I'm doing. But because this is all going to be all blues and greens with a little bit of pink in it, uh, I'm going to use some yellow to make my hashtag mood. And of course, because it's a light colour, I'm going to do it first. I'm just going to check that my yellow is nice. That's a nice one. So I've got a thinner one. That's good. Um, so I've written it in, I need that diagonal line to go through it as well, but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rub it out first because the yellow is so light you won't be able to see through it. And obviously I'm doing yellow, I'm going to go round, go the, do the borders and so on in a second. So rub it out carefully so I can still see it, just, and I'm going to do my hashtag mood there, hashtag mood. I'm not going to worry if it's a bit scruffy because I can tidy that up when I go around it. But one thing I do need to make sure is that my ink is dry before I start because I have done it with a few others, but there's bits where it bleeds. And that's obviously, you have to make sure that is really uh, nice and dry. The other thing I'm going to do, when I do go around it, I'm going to go around it in purple because obviously purple is a contrasting colour with uh, yellow and it will really pop out and zing. And I love a zingy colour. So... I'm going to give it one more layer, now it's dried, make it even more yellow. And then I shall go back to that in a little bit. So, I'm going to carry on, I'm going to get down to about here I think, and then I'm going to go back to that.
Right, so I'm now at this point where this is dried enough and I've filled in enough. I think, in fact, I'm just going to finish off this bit below and then make sure that everything is dry before I start. I'll just fill in that one too, actually. Just one simple colour. One thing I will say about all these different patches is uh, it's lovely to have lots of different patterns, but sometimes it's nice to have just sort of plain ones dotted around because they balance it out a little bit, yeah? And uh, yeah, it's starting to look good though. I like it, I've got all the cooler colours and now I'm gonna do my mood. So to do it, uh, just as we did in the last video, when we went round our shapes, I'm gonna use that technique. I'm gonna do it with the purple. This has been dry now, this has been ages because I've done all this colouring in since then. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go around my letters carefully. It doesn't matter if I go over the yellow a little bit because, you know, I need to smile it up a bit, don't I? Well, you can start to see how the purple and the yellow really um, pop off each other. All of this is dry as well, which means it's okay for me to put my hand on it. Um, hashtag don't forget your, uh, your hole in the middle. Okay, I'm happy with that. That's um, that's me filled in all those little bits. I quite like the way it's gone a bit, it's bled slightly, which is well, which is good. I'm just going through, making sure I've got all the little bits. I can't see any paper through it uh, in any of the gaps. So it sounds out nice and brightly. Hashtag mood. It's the only bit of yellow that'll be on there. I just want to put that out. And I am gonna add some more of these as I go along. So I'm gonna finish it off now and see what happens. Right, so I've now finished that part on the outside. I've left it for about an hour, so it's really, really dry. I went round and I uh, made sure that all my edges were nice and sharp. I got into my little bits, added a little bit of overlay, which was really, really good. Just makes it all look a bit tidy. I'm really glad I put that uh, little bit of pink in as well, because it just brings it up a little bit and also gave me a few more options when I was doing my colouring in. So the next part I've got to do is the inside of my face. And as you can see on the outside, I've put some of my hashtags up, hashtag sad, uh, hashtag NHS, hashtag stuck, hashtag stay indoors, hashtag mood, hashtag trapped. And so I'm gonna do the same thing now inside, but this time, instead of using all the cool colors and pink, pink isn't really officially a, um, a main color because it's actually a tint. It's got white in it, it's red with white in it. So. Done with my colours, I'm going to get rid of them and I'm going to move on to doing the same thing with my warm colours. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm going to see where that takes me. So one of the things I'm doing as I'm looking around the edges is I'm trying to see what colours I've got that can contrast well. And obviously I'm starting with my yellow because it's the lightest colour and everything else will uh, will go on top of it if I need to layer it up. So here I've got purple. Because I've got purple there, I'm gonna put yellow here. And then that'll just add to that contrast which I'm looking for. Same here, I've got a big panel there. Actually, I think it can look like that. So I need to put some yellow in there somewhere. So I think what I'll do is I'll do some yellow stripes in that bit. And I can play with that later when I put my other color over the top. Layering is a really easy way to uh, get this looking really, really good. So because I've got blue here, I will probably do this bit as orange. And you'll see that when I put them together, orange and blue look very good together. Um, yeah, so just think about your choices as you're doing this. Think about what you're layering on and how you're going about it. Because obviously if you've got yellow, you can add to yellow. You can't really put yellow on afterwards. If you've got purple around the edges, it's good to put yellow. If you've got orange round, or blue around the edges, it's good to do that. If you've got green, it's good to use red. So have a think about your choices as you're doing it. So 
one thing that I found with this that was really helpful for me was obviously starting with the yellow first, then going to the orange and then the red, working from the top to the bottom. Also, when I came to do my writing, I did orange on yellow and red, to one red there, but red on orange. I thought that works quite well. It's using the colours next to each other on the, on the colour spectrum, which is lovely. So, there you go, all done. Self-portrait, and then using colours and patterns and all sorts of things uh, to make it look even more fantastic. Um, like I say, I have got another um, video, which is all about how you can do your self-portraits um, uh, quite systematically. Um, if you do find that hard, I'll also put a quick video as well about how to do a cheating version, uh, but you'll need a photograph of yourself to do that. So, um, yeah. This is what I've done. I bet you can beat me. Have a go and uh, I look forward to seeing what you do.